Hello Jungles, let's talk about the Metro 233, 234 and 235 trilogy by Dmitry Glukovsky. And this is a Russian post-apocalyptic uh, series that became more well known to the West probably due to the video games that were made out of it. Uh, Metro 2033, Metro Last Light and Metro Exodus. And they are loosely based on the trilogy. The um, book series has an interesting story and a more interesting history. And recently, Dmitry Glukovsky was uh, back in the news because he was on the blacklist of Vladimir Putin because of his reaction to uh, Russian invasion in Ukraine. Uh, so yeah, he's one of the good Russians, so don't uh, be too worried about, you know, uh, he's an evil Russian or something. I have met Dmitry Glukovsky in a convention a couple of years ago and uh, Oh, no, it's in a couple of years. It's back in uh, 2018. It's a lot of years. Uh, how the time flies when you're cooked up in uh, lockdown. Right? That's apocalyptic. And he came off as a very cool dude. And I also got Metro 2035 signed that day. So, yeah. Um, what's very interesting about Metro 2033 is that it first appeared in 2002 as uh, an internet uh, web series. Basically, uh, Dmitry Glukovsky, who used to work as a reporter, was writing the story of Arium in the um, metro station, the world of, the, of metro, uh, underneath Moscow, as a serial on the internet. And he was publishing chapter by chapter, and soon it became very popular. So in 2005, it was actually published as a book. As a printed book, and something that uh, Dmitry Glukovsky did in his original web novel is that midway through, he kills the protagonist, and he says that I did this because I want to do something different. Everybody has the hero is an end of the trip. I want to do something different. I want to subvert expectations. Those magic words everybody loves, but of course people were like, no. No, please continue. And so he did. So yes, basically in the first book, which I do not have because I was stupid and unhauled it years ago after reading it. Midway through the book, the main protagonist sort of dies and then returns to life on the next chapter. And actually after that, I think that the novel gets a much better pace. And yes, basically the entire Metro series has been very popular. Russia as an interactive experience. Uh, Dmitry Glukovsky used a lot of the internet that was nascent back then as a way to promote his books. So that's very, very important. The popularity of his web novel meant that he, spe that he spoke with the developers of the video game. Uh, so when the video game came out in 2010, uh, the books came to the West. And I think that they are a very interesting take on post-apocalyptic genre. The background is that back in uh, 2013, which was the future for when the books were written, there was a nuclear war and Moscow was bombed. So the only survivors in the city are the people who cooked up into the metro. And we're uh, 20 years after that, when a whole generation of people was born and raised in uh, the metro and we have a new society, a new system underneath the city where everybody lives. They eat uh, mushrooms and uh, pork. They live, of course, in poverty because the surface is radiated so they cannot go upstairs. So they have to survive what they have underneath the surface. And I believe there is also nuclear winter on top. Uh, or there was nuclear winter and then uh, the snow thawed and uh, radiation started coming out from the snow. So it's even more unhospitable. Our protagonist is Artyom, who is living somewhere in the outskirts of the metro. And on his station, there are some, some creatures called the Black Ones who terrify people. And they speak to them and uh, they cause them to see visions or something. So along with a stalker called Hunter, stalkers are of course a term taken from the Roadside Picnic novel by the Shukovsky brothers, an iconic science fiction novel from Eastern Europe. Um, and they're the people who go on top to scavenge or to explore. 
Uh, so Atrium and Hunter go on a trip to find and warn the the order, the you know the Spartans. Uh, I'm not sure how it's translated in English. To yes, the Rangers of the Order. They're they're going to warn them about the black so they can do something. But of course, the trip is not easy because there are a lot of factions in Metro. There is Hansa, who are like uh, traders, and they are in a circle, a ring around um, the middle of this is a map screen, who are basically traders, and they live rich, while the rest of the Metro is hungry. Uh, there is also the Red Line, who are communists, and the Reich, who are Nazis. And so they have to deal, uh, they have to go through stations, abandoned stations, they have misadventures. At some point, Atrium dies and then returns to life, because he doesn't quite die exactly. But I was not owed by the first novel in the series. Uh, but it has a very interesting take on post-apocalyptic, because it manages to be a lot of focus, a lot on the, reali the realism of living in such a society. The setting is very interesting. Uh, Glukowski has a clear understanding of politics and how societies work. So you have a sense that this, yes, this can happen in a post-apocalyptic society. And there is this Lovecraftian threat of the black ones, which is also very interesting on top. And of course, the way it ends, I just loved it. If you've played the video games, the end of the first book is the bad ending from the video games, so you understand how uh, amazing the ending is, and I really loved it. So yeah, Metro 33 is not a perfect novel, I was not that fond of the writing style, to be honest, but I think that it has a clear vision of what it is, it's doing something interesting with the genre, and it actually focused a lot of the world building. Um, as for the games, I've only played part of the first one, not the Redux version, the original Metro 2033. I was not a big fan of the game too, I didn't like the gameplay, but the book reads quite a lot like uh, the video game. It uh, imagines a bit less shooting, uh, and yes, you're there. The train stations, and the long walks in the dark tunnels and the threat of mutants, it's always there in the background of the book. Metro 2034 uh, was published in 2009. Um, Glukowski, he said, himself has said in, you know, in a convention I was in, that uh, he was in a rush to write uh, this book because the first one was very successful, so he didn't do such a great job, uh, but it's really different from 2033. It doesn't star Atrium, it stars Hunter, who uh, finds uh, an old man, Homer, who wants to write a great story about the metro, as well as a girl called Sasha. It's on the other side of the metro. It's not on the north like Atrium, it's on the south. And there is a lot of things happening, basically uh, along the way, as uh, Hunter and Omer try to re-establish connection to the main ring of the metro, uh, they found out that there is an infection that is very dangerous, and the rangers also come in, and yeah, it's my least favorite of the series, uh, this novel. It's very different from the first one, it's uh, much more contained, the ending is somewhat grim too, I guess this is a given. The world of Metro is not a great place to be. It's not just about the poverty and the um, frugal living down there, or the dark. Uh, the atmosphere of these books is just... Uh, it's about a society slowly dying. Yeah, however, it feels much different from the first one. It's kind of alienating. It's interesting to read, of course. But uh, I believe that yes, you can skip it and go straight to book three, which uh, features characters from both the first and the third book. It actually stars Atrium, but we'll get there. But uh, Metro 2034 is somewhat odd, in my opinion. Yeah, I wasn't pleased with this book, alright? I'll be straight with you. I know fans of the novels may disagree with me and actually I'd love to hear your opinions about the books if you've read them and you watch this uh, video. 
but let's go to Metro 2035. Now let's get to Metro 2035, which is a book I just finished. So I finished the trilogy and I was like, yes, I'll make a video about this series too and how it is and why you should read it or not read it. Uh, my opinion is definitely give it a try, at least the first one, because it's really interesting. Uh, so in Metro 2035 we once more meet with Atrium after the events of Metro 2033 and he uh, he's a bit of a mess. Uh, I think that Atrium appears in a little small part in uh, 2034 and he clearly suffers from PTSD but in this book we're also in his head and that's very interesting and I clearly like the writing more on this one of course it's a Tzabir book uh, the Greek version is almost 500 pages long uh, compared to Metro 23 which is like uh, 330 pages uh, so yeah, it's it's a bigger one and it's also very wordy in uh, ways. People used to the more westernized, leaner style of today will probably feel that this is too wordy. But I really like this book because it's from the point of view of a person who is clearly emotionally distressed. After the events of uh, Metro 2033, Atrium is definitely sure that he has heard um other people on from another town other survivors from away from moscow on his radio so he is getting up to the surface and positioning himself with radiation trying to conduct other cities but he's not able to he meets homer from book two and he is told that somebody told him that uh, they have heard other people on the radio. So he goes on a sojourn to try and um, find him. However, there is an embargo. There are lockdowns on uh, the metro because there is a disease, uh, there is a sickness that pollutes their mushrooms. So they are unable to eat. And um, this time around, there is a very strong atmosphere of decay. Uh, the society of the metro is clearly sick. It's uh, People have decayed into animals and um, Atrium is clearly touching the head. Um, so, yes, at some points, the point of view uh, becomes a bit stream of conscience or Atrium is acting uh, irrationally because uh, yeah he suffers from emotional distress so this uh, translates in a very interesting way in this in the text of the book and this theme of decay uh, in every facet of the metro is prevalent and as the plot progress because there is a very big twist uh, around, around the middle of the book that changes a lot of what we know or don't know about the metro and also the way uh, people react to this as things go along it's it's a very bleak uh, ending so yeah it's not a pleasant read it's a very dark read uh, in a way a lot of what is happening um, is mirroring what Russia is going through and after reading this book we know why Peter Glukowski got in Putin's blacklist uh, <laughs> so again it's a bit of a spoiler but this is a very interesting read it uh, kind of channels another very popular post-apocalyptic series I won't say which because it will be a spoiler for both of them the book acts as a sort of a prequel to Metro Exodus so you get an idea um, that yes, uh, the video game series has diverted from uh, the books around uh, Last Light, but yeah, it's it's interesting. It's it's an interesting read. I really liked it. I don't quite enjoy it because it was frustrating at points. Uh, so if it made me feel something, it's definitely good. Uh, it's definitely the best in the series, in my opinion. It's uh, lips and bounds better as a novel in the writing, in the characters, in the atmosphere, this sense of uh, decay 
is almost gothic which I really appreciate it and uh, you know what it's like at some point it becomes a bit surreal because people are in so so much stress over what is happening how they live uh, cooped up down in the metro and at some points um, what is happening is atrocious and tragic uh, you know when you read it it's uh, it's not a fun read it's a very bleak read but it's it's also entertaining it's um i mean glukovsky can do that there is one certain scene in metro 2033 early on with uh the uh, if you've read the book you know what scene i'm talking about it's about a grandparent that was like that it was very uh, you really want to see blood to see people get punished for that and there are a lot of scenes like that in this book and there's a lot of paranoia, a lot of politics. Um, it's really interesting. And the way it ends, it ends in an interesting note. It's sort of like, it's not exactly hopeful. It's bittersweet. And I enjoy that. And if there was a Metro 2036, I would love to read it. Or maybe I should probably give Metro Exodus a try because it's sort of a sequel. To this book, I really got to enjoy uh, my trip down Metro 2033. All those years of building the series on and off again, um, and yes, I'm planning to. If I'm going to, you know, go through, I've got a lot of series I started reading, but I haven't finished yet. So I'm planning to do this type of videos when I finish them. Uh, there is another one, a horror series uh, that. I'm almost done with that I've been reading for 20 years, so expect a review for that somewhere, I think during the autumn. I don't know when exactly I'll read the final book, but I've read the others uh, within 20 years. So it's just, you know, me deciding to, f to finish it or something. Um, but yeah, this uh, this book was clearly, this series is clearly interesting. It's something different than the post-apocalyptic genre. And it's got a personality of its own, plus the author seems like a cool guy, so that's always the case. So, uh, if you read the series, leave a comment about this, uh, like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.